Kate recruits. meeting to order. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and the city in which we live. Guide us this afternoon as we make our decisions. Christ, amen. amen. This is the regular meeting of the Newton City Council, March the 8th, 2022. You have the minutes of the special call work session for February 22nd, 2022. Before you, I'll entertain a motion. So we move. Adopt the second. Motion is second. We adopt the minutes as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, <laughs> like sign. And the next item, excuse me, is a, a, the minutes from the regular meeting of February 22nd, 2022. Is there a motion on the minutes? So moved. Second. second. Motion second. We adopt the minutes of the regular meeting of February 22nd, 2022 as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, under boards and commissions, the first one, uh, the appointment to the Planning Commission, if we'll put that on our next agenda, please. Thank you. Uh, the second one, you're quite welcome. The second one is the Tree Commission, Ms. Jenkins. I'd like to reappoint Richard Prang. Second. Uh, we have a motion and a second to reappoint Richard Prang to the three-year term on Tree Commission. Any discussion? All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carried. Thank you. The next report uh, is the annual report from the Christmas Commission. Uh, good evening or afternoon. How are you? Hello. How are you? Good. Good. State good. your name for the record, please. Uh, yes, Kenya Brantley. All right. Thanks. Oh, and good afternoon to the rest of you. <laughs> <laughs> Noonan City Council passed a resolution on April 27, 2004, that created a committee identified as the City of Noonan Christmas Committee to serve on a temporary basis that assisted with temporary projects related to Christmas and on occasion other subsequent projects. In 2000, 2014, the council determined that it would be in the city's best interest to create a specific commission to assist the city with planning the details of the Christmas season. In December 2014, Noonan City Council adopted an ordinance to provide for the Noonan Christmas Commission with eight appointments. Each appointment is to serve a three-year term. The group was reduced to seven appointments when the number of city council members was reduced to six. According to Division 7 of Article 4 of Chapter 2, Section 2, 225, the Christmas Commission shall have the responsibility to develop plans and sponsor for appropriate events celebrating the Christmas holiday season and to present such plans as a recommendation to the mayor and city council by August of each year. Since being appointed in early 2015, the Noonan Christmas Commission, or the NCC, within the scope of the overall charge given by city council, has taken the time to inventory, evaluate, and assess all of the existing Christmas decorations and their conditions. The current Christmas Commission members, each serving three-year terms, are as follows. Linda Arnold, Jane Clifford, Val Cranford, Pam Johnson, Charlotte Lunsford, Nancy Teller, and Kenya Brantley. In 2021, the Christmas Commission 
unwrapped and reinstalled the lights on 30 of the downtown trees, purchased lights for three of the roundabouts that are gateway entrances to downtown, Noonan Utilities installed the power boxes at the roundabouts to make this possible, created a three-year plan for future Christmas decorations to prevent excessive requests for additional funding, purchased three new wreaths for fire stations two, three, and four, decorated the Wadsworth City Hall, Downtown Square, First Avenue Park, Greenville Street Park, and the roundabouts. And I want to say what an honor and a privilege it has been to serve on this commission. We appreciate your, not only your service, but making, helping make the city of Noonan look uh, like a magical place during the Christmas season. Yes. We thank you so much and look forward to your uh, continued service, not only on that, but uh, your report in August where yes. we hear what might come up for yes. the coming season. Yeah. appreciate it so much. Thank you. Council, have any questions? I've, I've had a lot of positive comments of what you all did on the roundabouts. Yes, Great absolutely. Idea and just thank you for spreading out. Yes. No, we Good love job. it. Yeah. Good job. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. You're giving right the point. Disney World a run for their money. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Phillips, do you have anything to say? Not after that. I don't have anything to say. Under new business, uh, we'll move into a public hearing. This is an application for alcohol beverage license. Uh, of off-premise uh, package sales of distilled spirits, malt beverages, and wine for 931 Lower Fayetteville Road. The reason for this is a new business, and for those of you who are, I know, I know everyone's paying attention, but this is our first application for the package sales of uh, distilled spirits here in the city of Noonan. So uh, this is a public hearing at this time. I'd like to ask if anyone here would like to come forward to speak to the issue of the issuing of this license or package for this package store and location. Okay. Um, if you have something to say, Mr. Thrasher, I mean, this is your opportunity. Don't, you're, you're not a shy fellow. Just you say can't say it. You have to come. Over here. In front. Mm -hmm. used to that yeah. and, and state your name for the record, please. I'm John Thrasher. Um, I'm just the real estate guy who was involved. This is the applicant, uh, Mr. Patel, Parrish Patel, Patel. and uh, he's uh, happy to uh, answer any questions uh, that you may have. I do have a question, Mr. Patel, and it, and sure. it ha has nothing to do with the application itself other than, other than the site that's been selected. Mm -hmm. And we're, we all know by looking at the package, and we all got in front of us where the site is, my concern uh, going forward, and I mean not to tomorrow, the next day, or even next month, but in the following couple of years, we've got a major road project right adjacent to where your site is on Lowell Fayetteville Road, and there's going to be a bridge replacement of that I-85 bridge right there at your site. And I'm, I am, I don't know if the other council members are or not, but I'm concerned uh, about that construction project and the site that you've selected, and we'd like to have like to have your point of view about you know what that may mean for you if you build on that site. Um, hi everyone. Uh, means after having a meeting with uh, city manager and everyone, uh, we have contacted the local uh, um, site planner, and after consideration with the proposed layout uh, kind. Of, we will be able to make a building a little bit back, and I would be able to make it, you know, kind of that way. And uh, I think I'm happy with that side, but of course, uh, and uh, for the future, it's going to take probably two, three years, right? I think uh, for the widening road project. Well, Mr. Phillips, have you got an idea about what the, the timeline is? Well, it, it may it's, even it's, not be two or three years. It, it, may it could five, actually be, maybe be five that. years. Right. Uh, you know, obviously, I would I would probably stand here in front of you and confidently say, in normal times, that it would be greater than five years. But obviously, with the new infrastructure bill uh, and availability of more federal dollars, I, I expect the timeline could be actually pushed up a little faster than what we would normally see. Right. Still, would be hesitant to put an exact timeline on it. Right, and then length of, of construction. 
We, we all right. remember what how long it took at Poplar Road. Yeah, absolutely. We do recognize, of course, that was a full-blown interchange. Full blown. Uh, well, but, this, pro this particular project will more than likely be phased, but it's, it's a very, very, very good chance that the location for this particular parcel is going to be in what we would consider phase one because uh, I think the primary initial concerns are definitely between the bypasses, which mm -hmm. would certainly include the bridge. I don't know if you saw... I know the applicant provided this particular rendering right. to us we right did. before yeah. the meeting. I don't know if, you, if that was presented to council. This is a revised plan. If you'll pass those out, that'd be great. We want you to be successful. Right. <laughs> we, but at the same time, we have a fiduciary responsibility to the city to make right. sure that when we, at the at the same time wanting you to be successful, successful, we don't want to put ourselves in a situation where we may owe you money because of loss of business or other things that go on uh, because of the construction of the replacement of that bridge right. and and we know it's going to happen i right. mean yeah, it's I not a, this isn't a pie in the sky uh you know project that's out there that somebody wishes we're going to do i mean it's it, it, this is real i can speak to that just a little bit first the applicant i think would like to thank the city manager the assistant city manager, the city attorney, and the, the project manager, Michael Clark. So we had an extensive meeting, actually including the adjoining property owner, Prime Ventures, um, Proctor Smith, and really had a, an excellent overview of what this project is. So immediately with that information, we sat down with uh, the person who had done the preliminary plan and said, please take that into consideration and will this uh, 8,500 square foot building fit on those two acres that he has under contract? And, and uh, what you see there is a revised plan that shows that yes, that building uh, will fit uh, on that site even uh, with the uh, right of way uh, acquisitions. So. Okay, so and there is a left left end, I see. Is that still there, Mr. Phillips, in the plan? Yes. yes. Okay. So you've got a, a right, obviously a right in, right out, and a, and a left end. There's no signalization there, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And you're willing to accept all of these, yes, all sir. the situation? Yes, sir. Without coming back to the city and saying, I didn't know, uh, and you, no, owe, no, and no, you no, owe me money. No, I'm completely aware of it, and I'm happy with it. Okay. All right. If, if you're on record saying that. Sure. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, that left in, is that going to be a separate lane? That left? I think it's... It, the, the, there would have to be a turn lane. Turn right. You can't. Yes. They won't design yes. a road turn without a turn lane. Right. A dedicated left turn. Yes. That's okay. what I'm going with. We, we've actually... And, and I think Mr. Clark is actually on jury duty he is. today, so he's not he able to join us, so he'd be answering this question. He might rather have jury duty. Yeah, he would be. <laughs> uh, after our meeting, uh, Mr. Mr. Thrasher and uh, Mr. Smith, uh, last week we reached back out to the uh, design engineers. Uh, one of the primary questions was uh, the design of this access point, because as, as the mayor described, it is right in, right out with that left end, so there is no left out. Correct. Uh, and there may be some other <coughs> modifications potentially, but you know when you start talking about your basic interchange options, signalization is too close to another right. signal. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of use here recently from, uh, with R cuts. The problem with an R cut here, as soon as you take a right, you get a bridge. Right. Uh, so while they're going to look at some other potential options, they're very, very, very limited, and this is. Very likely what they're going to end up with is simply this restricted left-hand movement. And it's not shown on this particular plan, but the left hand out would be restricted not just by paint, but those would actually be raised concrete medians. So, you know, really... You could, you'd have to run over the median. You'd have to run over the median, and uh, Mr. Furbish has his way some trees and landscaping that's actually in the median, so... So that, that's kind of what the design will likely look like for that access. Any other questions from council? I'll repeat myself. I mean, as long as as long as you're good with what you're seeing and you you know it's going to happen, and yes. you're not coming back to the city to ask for 
you know, some monetary relief when this happens, I'm, I'm good with this. Sure. Okay. I, I'm good. okay with that. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, anyone else has anything else to say about this application? This is a public hearing. This is your opportunity to come forward to speak. I'm going to close public hearing at this time. Is everything in order? It is. Mr. Sears, everything's in order with this? All right. I'll ask for a motion. So moved. Second. Motion is second. We grant the application as presented with comments attached from the, from the, uh, from the applicant. Uh, and I'd like those in the minutes, please. Uh, and made part of the process. Uh, is the, so I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion or questions? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. The next item on the agenda is a public hearing. This is our application for alcohol beverage license. This is Noonan First Retail. This, this also is an on-premise package sale of distilled spirits, malt beverages, and wine. The location for this particular application is 459 Miller Farmer Industrial Boulevard, and the reason for this is a new business. And we'll open a public hearing at this time and ask if anyone here would like to come forward to speak to the issue. Afternoon. How are you all today? You'll state yes. your name for the record. Uh, my name is Jujar Singh. Uh, he's the applicant, uh, applicant along with my wife. She's not here, so I'm going to represent him. My name is Manny Singh. Mm -hmm. um, we have the application completed, and we have the site work almost done. But if there's any questions or concerns, we can answer some of the questions if you have. Council, have any other questions? Do you currently own a store anywhere else? Yeah, we have stores in LaGrange and Newnan, liquor stores, and, and also gas stations. And, okay. and we have some other projects in the You world. have a package store that you own? Yes. Yeah. Is it about the same size that this one will be? Or no, it's, it's smaller, but he used to have one in Barnesville that was about 6,000 square feet, but he sold it a few years back. Okay. And my other partner, his wife is also on this application. He has a liquor store in, in LaGrange, and he's under contract to sell it. But this is going to be our biggest project for the liquor store. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? Comments? Uh, yes, I have one question somebody in the neighborhood has raised, and that's the uh, access to this off of the bypass. And I don't know if there's any other access, I guess, through the parking lot at Little Giant. Uh, it has two entrances. One is from the Millard Farmers Industrial Boulevard. Yes. And the other one is from the Little Giant Farmers Market. Yes. They're existing drives. Existing there drives. will not be a new driveway cut. Yeah, I'll, I'll this is a pad ready. Uh, with all the utilities in place and entrances in place. Yes. So there's going to be no entrances required. Additional. Okay, thank you. All right. Any other questions, comments? Anyone else like to speak to this issue who's here today? This is a public hearing on this alcohol application. I'm going to close the public hearing, ask if everything is in order. Ms. Sears, everything is in order on this? Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Appreciate right. it. Thank you. Thank you for being here today, gentlemen. Yep. All right. Is there a motion on the issue? So moved. Second. Motion is second. We grant the application as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carried. Congratulations. Thank you for coming. The next uh, is a consideration for public uh, to, for the purchase of the City Sister light pole banners. Uh, Mr. Chairman of the DDA, Mr. DeVoe. <laughs> yes. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, at the last meeting of the Downtown Development Authority, it was brought to our attention that we're coming upon the 25th anniversary of our Sister City celebration, and our current banners are not uh, faring so well. We need to have new banners. So it's my motion that we have these new banners. So second. 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 Motion is second. We grant the uh, consideration of the purchase of sister, new sister city uh, banners uh, for the downtown area. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion carried. The next item on the agenda today is a presentation of policy recommendations to establish parameters for eligibility <coughs> and funding uh, maximums for the small business economic assistance category under the ARPA. Moody, how are you, sir? I'm great. Mayor and Council, thank you for having me again today. 
Um, so before you in the memorandum, as we discussed in the previous council meeting, is the establishment of a small business program that would allow us to establish parameters for who can receive funding and how much funding can be received. Um, you'll see that we have set a maximum number of full-time employees at 75, a maximum amount to be requested inside a QCT, which is a qualified census track at 75,000, a maximum amount outside the qualified census track at 50,000. Businesses must be independently owned and operated, no franchises or chains, and they must not be representatives of nationally recognized organizations. Um, they must have an active business license with the city and must be in good standing with the city as well. Um, we will analyze based off of a base year 2019. Looking at 2020, the losses will be calculated between the gross receipts of those two years. We'll also be willing to recognize year 2021 since we continue to have pandemic issues related to those decreases in sales and closures. And uh, applicants will be limited to one application. Does anybody have any questions for the, the policy? I got a question. Absolutely. So would they apply to you and you verify that, bring it to us? Is that the process? Yes, sir. The process would essentially remain the same. The only reason it's slightly different is that under ARPA guidelines, in order to establish city-specific parameters, we'll need to qualify it as a program, so to speak. Okay. Anyone else? Just want to make sure for good standing with the city, that includes occupational tax, property tax, if they're in the central business district, the trash. Yes, sir. That, it includes all financial standing with the city. Anyone else? Anything else? We, we approve this recommendation? Second. Second. Motion to second. We approve as presented. Any further discussion or questions? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion carried. The next item is a presentation of a request for funding under the ARPA <laughs> for an external applicant. That didn't take long, did it? <laughs> no, quite immediate turnaround. <laughs> so this is the same applicant that was here on the last agenda. It's carryover. Um, NRG Fitness is requesting $28,052.16. Uh, this applicant is eligible and has exhibited losses and now fits under the new policy program that we have just established. Okay, Mr. King is here today if anyone has any questions of him, but I think the application we went over last time and just waiting for this for the parameters to be set, which we just did. So, and he fits within those, I believe. So moved. Second. That's what I'm looking for. Motion is second. Thank you. Any discussion further on this? I'll call the question. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carried. Thank you, Moody. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, the next is a presentation of information regarding the opportunity for the city of Noonan to join the National Opioid Settlement. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> Good for just, you. Good for us. So the, uh, the memorandum that you were provided explains the primary features that are described in these settlements. Um, essentially, there are two settlements, one with the distributors and one with the manufacturers. The distributors are for 18 years, manufacturers nine years. Um, and the city, well, the state of Georgia will receive 75% of the funding allocation, 25% will be reserved for localities. Um, what that funding amount is, I'm, we're not sure of just yet. Um, but the city has the option to sign on to either both of the agreements or one or the other. Um, registering on this initial document does not necessarily sign you on completely to the agreements. Um, it, however, will allow us to receive further information that we will need to be able to formally sign on. Do anybody have any questions, Mr. Moody, regarding this uh, option that we're taking here? Is I there do. any reason that we wouldn't want to sign on legally or anything else? I mean, I, we don't know what it's there, but we I can't think of any reason we wouldn't try. We, we know what's there if we don't. Because everybody's been impacted by it in different ways. That's right. Mr. Greco, did you say you had? Is, is there a deadline for putting in for the application, and when is that? For the initial sign-on date, it would be March 31st of this month. Wow, pretty quick. Yeah, pretty quick turnaround. So my understanding is if we do receive some of this money, we will, as a body, have a say-so in how this is distributed, or how is it going to work? That's, that's my big question. So essentially how the memorandum of understanding broke it down is that there will at some point be eligible use categories similar to how ARPA breaks down as well. 
and as I assume that the council will have the final approval on how those funds are spent. Okay, that's All right. It's not general fund money. No, no, no. no, no. no. <laughs> I'll make a motion, Mayor. Second. Approve. Motion is second. We approve um, the uh, joining of the National Opioid Settlement. I have one, one further question, right before you leave. Do we have any quantifiable data on how much the opioid, opioid epidemic has been endemic in Noonan? Like whether it's through treatment, referrals, whether it's the pathways, Noonan Hospital, Samaritan's Clinic, whatever it is, like to see what the actual impact is for us. Not on hand. County we do have has, organizations, though, that have that information. County would drive that information. There, there was an effort, an mm -hmm. effort's been going on for two to three years. There was actually some state grants given yeah. uh, to an organization, and, and I was very involved with it in the beginning of those particular efforts. And I'm sorry, I can't rattle it off my head, but there was a lot of data at that point in time about cost and resources and case numbers and everything that was broken down per county. And unfortunately, one of the reasons Coweta County actually received that grant because we were in one of the, one of the higher, higher counties in the state of Georgia. And I can't recall what we were in the top five, ten, but it was... Yeah, we were was, pretty high. So, so I can't... No, that's fine. I just, want, I just want to make sure yeah. that, you know, if we, if we do apply for it and we get the money, it'll be used, actually be used, and not I think the another community that might use it more. Could be used, actually. So I just want to make sure we're not, you know, keeping another community that might use it more from receiving it. No, we do have organizations that serve our community right. that are like dealing with that's prevention right. and treatment. I recall that. There was, an, there was an article in the paper about our status in the state. Mm -hmm. It was. Uh, it wasn't a pretty picture. S Senator Brass was heavily involved, so I may be able to reach out to him and get some more information. See if you can get that and, you, and, and distribute it out. Picture. I will. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next uh, item then is a consideration of a contract award for landscape installation services for State Route 34 and 85 interchange Mayor. enhancement projects. Mr. Mayor, I think we need to vote on that last one still. Correct. I'm sorry, we did. I thought we did. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. All those, I'll call the question <laughs> there. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Motion Thank you. carried. Thank you. Now, Mr. Furbish, let's talk about <laughs> landscape at I 85 in Bullsboro. Good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Uh, we're just bringing staff recommendation for as landscape services for the um, improvements there at I-85 would be the second phase. And we're just asking can you award the contract to the lowest qualified bidder. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Are there questions or comments? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Thank you, sir. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. The next is consideration for a contract award for ground penetrating radar, uh, boundary survey, and literature re uh, review of Farmer Street Cemetery. Mr. Mayor Craig, Brady. How are you, sir? I'm well. I hope you are. Members of the council, I'm going to ask our, the Farmer Street Cemetery Commission Vice Chairperson Jocelyn Palmer to join me. Um, the, on December 22nd, 2021, the Farmer Street Cemetery Commission issued a request for proposals to perform the activities the mayor just read aloud. Um, we received three uh, proposals. Um, one, of the one of the proposals was considered non-responsive in that they didn't provide um, in their proposal the option for the literature review. Um, so they were kind of disqualified during the review. And the other two, while both were probably likely able to perform the activities, NV5 engineers and consultants, the experience they exhibited in their packets was more um, aligned with road widening projects and performing survey services and ground penetrating radar for that. Um, and so the group, um, the commission voted unanimously to engage Pal Paleo West or make the recommendation to the council to engage Paleo West or perform these activities because they have directly similar experience doing exactly this for historic cemeteries. So I'll turn it over to Ms. Palmer and let her go from there if you have any questions. Sure, if you have any questions. Uh, Paleo West was the one that we selected. It was essentially unanimous with the group that we thought that this was the best suited for the particular application that we're looking at. They uh, also were bringing a fair amount of expertise, as we said, with the literature review, which uh, we need to continue from the original intent. It needs to be brought forward. We also felt that this company was going to provide us with uh, the best sort of ground penetrating radar 
uh, we've done some study on that, and that's the next step to take. Although we've done the rod type thing uh, 20 years ago, we now have better technology and we'll be able to understand exactly what we're dealing with. So we selected door number two, which was Paleo West. Ms. Paul, first of all, we appreciate uh, your hard work and the hard work of the rest of the members of the commission. We, uh, we, this is a very important project to all of us. And we appreciate that and we, we thank you for taking charge of the project and finding these folks. And um, if there are any other questions. Ms. I do. Paul, I got uh, a question. What's going to be the boundaries of this survey? We, we, that'll be determined. Right, so, that's actually so that's what part we're trying, of it. a boundary survey. It's one of the activities that will be performed. Okay, so they'll be doing the ground penetrating radar in, in an effort to help kind of help us figure out what the boundaries. Well, are. The, the ground no the the, we the ground will, penetrating radar will be used to clearly identify burial sites. Yeah. The boundary survey will be done similar to, you know, the acquisition of a piece of property to delineate specifically what are the boundaries of the Farmer Street Cemetery. As you may know, you know, there are neighboring properties mm -hmm. that have potentially may or may not have built mm -hmm. fences into an area we believe may or may not be the cemetery. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is have this firm clearly delineate the boundaries of the survey uh, of the cemetery. So if they believe that maybe some of the shaft work that they did before was not completely inclusive of the um, cemetery, then they may recommend doing whatever it is they do to determine whether we that's eligible as well. We simply don't know. And the purpose of the boundary survey is to define the problem, which is to say what the four corners, uh, and, and this goes back from examining historic documents, we don't believe that there is anybody that is uh, exceeding the original space. So, but the problem is, is as time has passed, these uh, boundaries may well have been encroached upon by uh, households surrounding mm -hmm. that area. But we don't think, but once we have it defined and we have those boundaries and we do the survey with the ground penetrating radar, we'll know for certain. Okay, so my question is, and I get what you're saying, is that people may have encroached on it. What I'm asking is, if, uh, is there going to be any effort to see if it exceeds the boundaries that we currently think they are? I would doubt that. Our remit is, is to look at the historic um, uh, space of property that goes back actually quite far in time uh, prior to this site being used as a cemetery. So we, we think we know generally what the boundaries are, but we want a legal definition of it. And if it's beyond that, that would be certainly up for y'all to make some kind of decision about what you might want to do with that. But we won't be surveying areas that are outside of the legal definition. Unless the uh, Paleo West people come to us and say, hey, look, we found something else. But at this point, we. I would say no. And, and that is what my question is, is to include in this some sort of conversation about how they would determine whether the boundaries actually go farther than what we've already designated as the cemetery. Can I ask it in a different way? Mm -hmm. Are you going to limit their search? No, sir. Okay. <laughs> well, then that answers that my question. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You. You're welcome. That's part of the literature <laughs> review. You're not going to give them the a, task you're not going to give one. them a defined area and say play inside this. Spot. No, sir. You're going to say, tell us what it is. Right. Yes. Okay. But they also got and to understand that you know when you start getting time. onto properties that have been developed, <clears throat> private properties that we don't own, this team is just not going to be able to enter. <laughs> Brad's kind of laughing at me. Onto a private property to do GPR work. No, I get that, but we've got a whole park down the hill and all that, and I'm just wanting to make sure that we're not going to say, hey, this is the top of the hill, this is where the park starts. No, I, don't think not... any, I don't think there's any attention to that, obviously. Okay. I think their, their research that they have indicates that it's unlikely, but I don't think there's no intention for that to, to keep them from finding potential evidence and say, hey, we need to go further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But same thing, you know, in, in the street, right. same mm -hmm. thing the placement of the African-American Alliance mm -hmm. actually is now, right. the mm -hmm. driveway that's in there now. Exactly. I mean, there's so many factors that the right. thing has changed over the years. Okay. 
without Make, knowing anything about where they were that's placing the building right. or a driveway. That's, that's correct. correct. Exactly. But the ground penetrating radar will be covering those areas, and Good. we will have some answers for you Good. with that. That's what I was Make, looking for. Thank you. That's right. Make a motion to approve Mayor second. with Pelio West. All right. Motion and a second. Further, con further conversation, discussion, questions? Thank you, Ms. Paul. Got a vote. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Thank you. Okay, the next um, item on the agenda under visitors is a request from Summer Grove neighborhood to post signs and our banners at entrances for the 2022 events. Uh, is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Second. Motion is second. We approve the request from Summer Grove for this 2022 signage events. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, <coughs> like sign. Motion carried. The next uh, request is to close Madison Street between Jefferson and Jackson for RPM Crafts and Brews uh, Fair on Saturday, March the 26th. May, yeah, Mayor uh, if I may interrupt, that this, um, there was an error by the applicant. The date is actually Sunday. It is not on a Saturday. Um, so I wanted to make sure that was, you guys know that when you're considering this, the applicant made an error and put Saturday. It's actually a Sunday event. This has come to you guys in the past, you may recall. For but, Sunday. but it's Sunday the 27th. Right, that's right. It's supposed to be Sunday. We tried um, and we're finally able to, I believe this morning, get confirmation that in fact, because there's some conflicting language in the applicant's materials, it is Sunday the 27th, so there will be little to no impact on neighboring businesses. Okay. At what time is this? Same times. I mean, it's just the date is incorrect. Okay. So we'll move it to the 27th. Okay. The one thing I think that has changed between now and, and last year when we did this was there are, are people actually living on that street now, up above um, the, the renovated building on Madison. That's right. And the, the letter I read indicated that they, that they were going to go out and talk to these folks and who live who are the businesses there but are they also gonna is there someone here today from rpm mm -hmm. uh, will you find out for us if they indicate if they intend to talk to the people who actually live there yeah we can ask I mean, them you, that. Yeah. you can't keep them from coming and going i agree of where they live okay with that provision i'll entertain a motion so moved Second. Motion is second. We approve the request. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign. Thank you. The next two items are a request from Stalwart Productions LSC to film scenes for The Walking Dead and the Greenville Street Park, the first one, March 9 through 11 prep days, March 14 filming, and March 15, 16 strike days. Uh, I believe Mr. Riley is here or is yes. someone else? Yes, a couple members of their team are okay, here. Okay, so you brought, come the, you, you brought the team. If they you'll did. come forward and identify no. yourself, <laughs> yeah. please. Mayor Brady, the, the staff's reviewed everything and the staff's supportive of it. Um, just for you know, for your purposes, um, the Greenville Street Park location will impact eight parking spaces. Um, and then the downtown, I believe it, my count was 23 parking spaces in addition to the road closures. Um, they've, they've followed the checklist. Um, and the policy as adopted by this body, so the staff supportive of the request is presented. Okay, thank you. Hi Hello. there, my name is Afton. I'm one of the location managers, and me and my team uh, have been working to permit to film in the Greenville Street Park on Monday the 14th. Um, it's a half day of work. The scene involves um, someone in a community giving a speech to a group of people listening, um, and then it just kind of shows that the community is thriving. Uh, the second half of our day, we'll move over to a different part of um, the city, and we'll talk about that. But um, we would love to use the park mostly as is. Um, we'd like to make some small cosmetic changes or additions. Um, some of those include, um, in order to limit the amount of traffic and modern vehicles and things that we see, we'd love to hang fabric from the colonnade, um, cascading down and you know, moving in the wind and it's blue fabric. They don't plan on doing any invasive attachment. It'll likely be uh, fishing wire or bungee cords, things that are unseen from the camera, and then they will be quickly taken down. Um, one of the other things that they'd love to do is, um, in the scene, they are uh, looking at some placards of fallen members of their community, and we'd like to attach some 
bronze looking placards like you see around the city um, notifying the death of someone. Um, and it will attach with like museum gel or um, tape, but nothing fixing into the brick around the fountain or the brick uh, around by your feet. Um, we would love to move the park benches uh, and tables if possible, just off to the side, out of sight, and then move them back into place. Uh, because the work falls on a Monday, um, it's very difficult for our crew to show up very early on Monday morning and get all this done, and we'd like to ask permission to do all this um, in the days leading up to it, Thursday and Friday, um, and then having a guard on site to watch our equipment, watch our set dressing to make sure it's not messed with or damaged by weather over the weekend. Um, we try to tidy up all of the equipment, all of the things uh, in one space so that the park is still accessible to all the public uh, over the weekend because the weather finally looks nice. Um, and we would love to um, cover anything that might be a spoiler with maybe uh, carpets or fabric or things so that they just stay covered until we are ready to film them on Monday morning. Um, we are working with GDOT for permission to slow or stop traffic for small periods of time on uh, the roads around us. Um, and we know that there's limitations to that. And so we've warned the production that they will not be able to hold as long as they want. We know it's a main thoroughfare into the town square. And so we want to make sure that everyone has access to that. Um, and then I think the last thing is the use of those parking spots. Um, right now, I think one of them is being used for a GDOT issued a, a message board that tells you that this might be happening on the upcoming date so that we can give warning to all the people in the community that this is going to possibly impede some of their traffic plans that morning. Um, and I think that's it for my notes and questions. All right. Yeah, I know this may seem a silly question, but I want to make sure that we haven't booked someone in that park over the weekend. We have not. They've contacted Leisure Services, who manages the rentals. They have it tentatively held until this body acts. Okay. All right. Good. Thanks. Questions? Motion? So moved. Second. Motion to second. We grant the request as presented. Any discussion? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed like sign. And I assume you're still up on the second yes. request. This is for yes. um, stalwart films again. This is for 9 East Broad Street, or actually in the alley yes. behind 9 East Broad Street, March 11 and uh, 9. March yes. 11 through, uh, 9 through 11 yes. for prep days, 14th and 15th for filming, and 16, 17 strike days. Yes. So we have another scene that will take place on that same Monday in the afternoon and then in the uh, entire day of Tuesday, which is the 15th, uh, we plan to film a scene where an ambulance turns into that alleyway and gets stuck. And then our heroes um, are surrounded by walkers. Sorry, it's Walking Dead, so it's a little bit more expected. Um, and they're surrounded by walkers and they have to escape using a pipe that's um, coming out of a building. So they climb up on the ambulance and escape that way. We have plans to put a, a rigged roof truss on the top. We've got a structural engineer that's come out and um, worked with the property owner about the roof itself and the ca uh, capabilities of it. We've also worked with all the businesses and residents in that area uh, to utilize parking that they might normally um, use and then also make cosmetic adjustments to the buildings around the alleyway. Um, we have reached out to uh, the Noonan Utilities Company and they have helped safeguard some of the power lines that are a little bit lower and they've added some of those yellow strips that help uh, prevent dangerous uh, contact. And then we've also reached out to um, the uh, city, sorry, We've uh, reached out with Ray Norton with the sanitation department to make sure that all the dumpsters and uh, all the things in the alleyway that need to be picked up are able to be done so. I think it's at 5.30 every morning. We'll kind of move them out so that they're easily accessible and they don't have to worry about us working around them. Um, we have found parking off-site for most of our work. Uh, Seven Perry is the foundation church. We're going to use their parking lot for all of our prep crews. Um, except for an immediate unloading and loading zone, which will be right there by Knife and Stone, and we work, we've worked with them and compensated them for the use of their parking. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. I think 
That's it. Oh, and then the sidewalk closure. Due to COVID, we'd like to protect our actors from catching COVID from strangers. Uh, and everyone in our crew is tested regularly, so we have a bubble. So we'd like to um, request that the sidewalks immediately close to the alleyway on Spring and Perry are closed so that we have a little bit more space for our cast members to exist without being, you know, asked for <coughs> autographs and things from fans. Um, and then we'll, we'll work with all the residents and the businesses to make sure that their patrons and the, the residents can get to their places. Um, we'll just have to work with them about timing uh, if we're actively rolling the weight with us for a couple minutes until we can cut and then we'll walk them through our set to get to where they need to go. So I think that's it. Um, we plan on using the um, train depot as our catering space. We're putting up a tent for our background. Uh, we're going to be using some parking lots off of Cavender Street for our base camp. So everything uh, is going to be on private property. Um, and I think that's it. Okay, the only um, <clears throat> question I might have would be a concern, a noise concern from 57 East of the demo that's going on there. Yes. Yeah, we are aware about the uh, demolition. In fact, when we were scouting it, it was in the middle of the process. They were tearing things down. So we're very aware. The scene that we're filming will we'll be creating a little bit of noise on our own. There's going to be some screaming and possibly, you know, <laughs> some walker growling. So I, I don't think it'll be too, too much of an issue because a lot of our sound will be added post-production uh, and they'll be able to cover some of that demolition noise with, you know, walker groans. So there won't be a request for our demolition crew to stop no, work. They are, we are fully aware that that is full speed ahead. I'd like that on the record. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> They're not likely to want to do that. I know. Okay. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and a second. We approve the request as presented. Any other discussion or questions? All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Pose like sign, motion carried. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for a great series as you wrap up. Okay, uh, that, is, that ends our regular uh, agenda this afternoon. I know we have a couple of folks who are on our sign-in sheet who would like to speak. Um, they would, the, the period of time for speaking would be three minutes each. Uh, on, on the subject. So if you've got more than one person that wants to speak on a subject, it's still three minutes. So uh, I would ask anybody that wants to come forward to speak at this time regarding any issue that's off agenda to come forward and state your name for the record, please. Good afternoon. Sorry. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Silvana Cordillo. I am a resident of Noonan Lakes, a Batson Cook multi-use development. An extended stay hotel is in the process of obtaining city approval to open on the corner of McIntosh Parkway and Remington Way, 36.1 feet from my home, my family, and my neighbors. I am joined today by some of those concerned neighbors who are greatly affected by this decision. We understand there is unfortunately nothing the city can do to stop the construction of a hotel inside a residential neighborhood. Multiple residents, myself included, along with HOA board members, have made several attempts to contact Andy Ulsh, Batson Cook developer in charge of Noonan Lakes community. Our initiations have been ignored, which is not surprising considering Mr. Ulsh's prior tendency to neglect our needs. For many years, Mr. Ulsh has failed to maintain the entrances, keep up the landscaping such as ground cover, playground mulch, high erosion, has failed to maintain the amenities such as broken bridges, unsafe walking paths, and uneven surfaces. He has not maintained our retention areas to code. Mr. Ulsh has failed to maintain a balanced budget, including collecting enough reserves to support the maintenance and upkeep of the landscape and facilities, and has had zero communication or response to any of our concerns. As our city officials elected to represent the best interests of your citizens, we are here today asking you to please intervene on our behalf with Mr. Ulsh. Communication with him this prior year and since by members of the city government in order to make arrangements for the proposed finishing of Remington Way and its sidewalks that came along with this extended stay hotel deal were obviously successful. So, given that Mr. Ulsh responds to you when his property profits are at stake, we are asking for you to contact him now that his property residents are at stake. Even though Mr. Ulsh doesn't seem to think so, I hope this council realizes that our lives are much more important than land. And given part of your civic responsibilities lie with protecting your citizens, 
We feel you should have no reservations reaching out to him and addressing all of our concerns about his failed developer responsibilities, the way that the road was addressed with him directly. Um, I would hate for potential residents and business owners of other developments Bats and Cook are currently building, such as the promenade at Noonan Crossing, to find out that not only does their developer not care about the quality of their homes and complexes, but the elected city government doesn't either. We are not asking you to stop the building of the hotel inside our residential neighborhood. We are merely asking that you require Mr. Alsh to communicate directly with our HOA about all of these concerns. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you being here today. I'll tell you that I did speak to Mitch, Mr. Alts yesterday. Thank he, you, Mr. Uh, May. was at the airport headed out of the country and will be back in a week. And we have set up another call when he returns to continue our discussion. Thank you, Mr. Thank May. Thank you for being here. Okay, who else had something else off agenda today? Anyone else? Okay. Hi, if you'll state your name for the record, please. Hi, I'm Beth Wong, and I live at 65 Berry Avenue, and my concern today is the gentleman that lives across the street from me at 64 Berry Avenue. He has been living there since July, and we've been back and forth to court several times. He was living in his RV, and he started living there in his truck. And then when we complained, <clears throat> code enforcement went out, done what they needed to do. They awesome doing what they needed to do, but this gentleman just will not comply no matter what. He's still there. He was there today. We signed a, a nuisance letter last week with the code enforcement and Judge Collins, and he was still there today camping in the pouring rain. He's living there, and we're not supposed to be living in an RV inside the city limits. My view from my front porch is absolutely horrible. I have emailed each and every one of y'all, everybody, and tried to get this under control, but it has been going on for seven months now, and it is just an absolute disaster across the street. And I'm just here today to see if there's anything that you can do to make this stop and to get this under control, because this man does not plan to move. He does not, does not care what anybody says. He is doing what he wants to do. As long as I appreciate you being there. I don't mean to cut you off, did yes. I? Yes. No. Okay, good. I'm sorry. I didn't, mm -hmm. didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, I, we appreciate you being here and bringing this to our attention. I, I believe one of the reasons and that, that you didn't hear from any of us is that this was in our municipal court system. Right. And it's, it's not our place. In fact, we're restricted against right. interfering as council members and as mayor with something that's in our municipal court system. Right. You brought this to us today. We will have some discussion about what's going on here. Right. We'll find out with our city attorney, you know, what the situation is and be back in touch with you. I mean, okay. I, but but you, you saw us not respond because, again, I'm not Right. I guess my frustration is because, you know, I have been to every court, every date that we have made, it's been pushed back 30 days, 30 more days, 30 more days. And it's just, it gets frustrating for a citizen that you can't even sit on your front porch or sit at your dining room table without seeing the campsite across the street. And it's like, okay, well, how many more 30 days is this gentleman going to get before somebody does something to make him remove that RV? So. I don't think anyone up here sitting in our living room or on the front porch would want to see that either. So right. We appreciate you being here, and we're going to have discussion about the issue. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. appreciate it. Anyone else off agenda? Council off agenda? Anyone? I do. Right. Um, I brought up with you at uh, Burns Weekend that in just a few short years, we're going to be <laughs> celebrating our bicentennial. And we are. I think the, oh goodness. 2028. Yeah, the, the last time, I can't remember, the, not the last time, but I meant the 175th. <laughs> Um, I don't know what our process was. I know there was a five-year-long thing and all of that, um, and I wanted to go ahead and bring that to the attention so that if there is something we wanted to do, we have plenty of time to do that, and I would think that we would. We, we did discuss that that mm -hmm. evening, uh, and what happened at the 175th, much like what happened at the 150th anniversary, um, I'm dating myself by saying I remember both of those, involved with both of those. Um, 
was that there was a committee involved mm -hmm. appointed by this body mm -hmm. uh, who planned the events, planned the celebration, mm -hmm. you know, was in charge. And uh, there was a chairman of that event. I forget. I, th I think, in fact, the chairman of the 175th was Scott Wilson, if I remember correctly. Um, somebody fact-checked me on that. <laughs> and so I think it would be incumbent upon us to put on the next agenda or the next one after that to mm -hmm. the Mr. Sears to um, adopt an ordinance that creates that committee and um, for our bicentennial celebration. I think right. we did that in 78 and, or prior to 78. We also did it prior to uh, the 175th. So we right. can find that ordinance and we can dust it off and <laughs> update it if we need to and have it. I appreciate that. Okay. That's what I wanted. Okay. Anyone else? That's a great idea. And that gives us opportunity to uh, budget forward mm -hmm. for this Absolutely. by setting aside some right. funds each year. And it was, a, it was a, you know, both events were well received by the citizens, and mm -hmm. it, it was a lot of fun. So let's yeah. do that again. Okay. 2028. Anyone else? I just wanted to uh, say, you know, <clears throat> yesterday we celebrated the retirement of our finance director. Uh, she served for 20 years with the city, so I, I appreciated all her hard work. Uh, I know our uh, finance department does a great job, especially with auditing and keeping us straight with our uh, different things. So thanks to Ms. Yeah. Klein. Thank you. I and I do think have one more thing. Sorry? I do have one more Sorry. thing. Sure. I almost forgot. Um, it is International Women's Day and Women's History Month, and I um, wanted to recognize the contributions of some leadership in our community and in our city. Um, our women leaders. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. And I also wanted to say that it is also Colon Cancer Awareness Month, uh, which is why I'm wearing blue and will be all the month. Um, get tested, people. It's the most preventable of the cancers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, we have no need for an executive session, and that ends our, our agenda. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion <coughs> second to adjourn. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like signs. We're adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.